relaxed and then just tell them welcome welcome to today's launch we are launching the aquaculture academy and in this room those of us joining through our online platforms are part of history you are witnessing history being made today and that is a good thing now i'd like to quickly start off by just giving you a few house rules all right in case you need to use the conveniences that is for the ladies and gents gentlemen if we need to adjust our belts and adjust our coats what you will do is right outside the door to the left you'll be able to see where the conveniences are for the ladies same direction all right so if you need to powder your nose please feel free to use those facilities at your convenience and as we continue I'd like to also give a special, special shout out to a number of groups that are here with us. And first of all, I'd like to quickly recognize the representatives from the Kingdom of the Republic of Netherlands. We have the Netherlands ambassador who is here with us, as well as um, a representative from their sector of agriculture, that is Ingrid and Ambassador Martin. They, will, they are here with us, joining us virtually. We celebrate them. We have county government representatives who are joining us as well online. We have the, sorry for that. We have foundations that are here with us. Thank you for being here with us. Of course, we have participants from the farmers competition that we had. They're seated right here to my extreme left. Thank you for joining us. We celebrate you. We, we look forward to getting to know who has won what, right? Are you excited about that? Very nice. I am also very, very ex excited about that. We have specific aquaculture groups that are also in attendance. And these groups, I'd like to mention them quickly by name. We have Victoria Aquaculture Youth Group. This group is a group that supports innovation in the aquaculture industry. All right, here we go. Can you hear me now? You can hear me better. All right, so we have Victoria Aquaculture Youth Group. Victoria Aquaculture Youth Group. They support innovation in aquaculture and they are represented by Vincent. We also have Aqua Innovators Association. These guys provide extension services to farmers who are in the aquaculture space. We also have Resect. Resect, this particular group farm black soldier flies. Now, yes, they, so they, they actually farm flies. And these flies are used as fish feed. So don't worry, don't, don't start wondering why we are celebrating um, the farming of flies. They are used as fish feed. And Resect is represented also by Proscovia. So those are the different groups that are represented here today, and we really, really celebrate them. As we continue, we also have a hashtag that we are using today, and the hashtag is Aquaculture Academy. Hashtag Aquaculture Academy. So please feel free to use those, that particular tag as you continue with today's celebration. Feel free, whatever information you get, put it on your handles and use that hashtag, and you'll be able to get to that. Also, we have a few other social media handles that I will be announcing in the short while. Also, feel free to also get to the website. I'd also like to recognize our sponsors. First sponsor is, of course, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. We have Screeting, we have Unga Feeds that are also part of our sponsors today. All right? For our social media handles, as you can see them on the screen, we have Facebook handle is Lattice Aquaculture Limited, Twitter at Lattice Aqua, Instagram at Lattice Aquaculture Limited, LinkedIn Lattice Aquaculture Limited. So feel free to tag any of those handles as you post, as you engage with us throughout today's celebration. And as we continue, I'd like to quickly point out a special thing that we'll be doing at the tail end of this. 
as you had me mention is that we have some farmers who are here and we are going to have an award ceremony at the end of it. Now, this award ceremony is a special one, and once we get to that particular point, we will let you know. And for those of us who are joining us here and online, we have something very great for you. That, that is, you can participate in getting to select the people who win. You will get to hear from all these farmers as we continue, so please hold on to the tail end and be able to sit down, get to hear from the farmers, and also get to vote for them. Brilliant. I'd like to get this show on the road, all right? Are we ready and excited for this? Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, someone told me not to say that on the mic, but I'm also excited, all right? I'd like to welcome a special lady to just uh, join me on stage. I'll be inviting two of them to join me on stage. So I'd like to, first of all, let you know who she is, and then she will join me on stage. Now, the first lady is the CEO of Lattice. She goes by the name of Winnie Ouko. Other than being the CEO of Lattice, she is a renowned strategist and leadership advisory consultant. She has done this in many East African organizations and in diverse sectors. She is an adjunct lecturer at Strathmore University and has trained scores of professionals in corporate finance, business acumen, and strategy. She is also a great contributor to aquaculture in East Africa through Food Tech Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome through a round of applause the CEO of, of Lattice Consulting, the lovely Winnie Ouko. Big round of applause for Winnie even as she joins us on stage. Karibu sana. And as she takes her seat, I'd like to welcome on stage another great lady who goes by the name Julie Muyela. Now, Julie currently holds the title of agribusiness leader at Lattice. Other than being the agribusiness leader at Lattice, she has been an audit manager at Deloitte, Cayman Islands. I have to emphasize on that, Cayman Islands, all right? She is also, wait, where was I? Cayman Islands, right? She is currently the associate director at Lattice for agriculture. She heads the aquaculture and agribusiness practice and ensures that great partnerships are formed in order to promote this particular sector. Other than that, she has previously also held the position of finance director at the Africa Enterprise Challenge Fund. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome on stage the lovely Julie Muyela. Welcome, Julie. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right, I'd like to start with Winnie. Uh, very quick, simple question so that we get to understand why we are here, the path that has led us to being here. And I think for us to understand that, we need to start from who Lattice is and what Lattice does, right? So, as the CEO of Lattice, kindly describe to us what does Lattice do? Who is Lattice and what does Lattice do? Thank you, Damiano. I'm still blushing from that introduction. I felt like a contestant <laughs> on a show or but something. But it's, it's true stories, right? <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'm very, very excited to be here. Let me tell you a little bit about Lattice. Lattice is a company that has been built around solving problems for businesses. And not just any problems, but problems that really matter to either the business leader or the business owner. We say we like to solve problems that, if resolved, move the needle for the business. And we do it in different areas. The first way we do it is through strategy advisory. You suspect your business can do better, but you can't figure out how or why. Lattice will help you. You're trying to figure out how to make sure your team is aligned so that everybody's working towards the same goal. Lattice will help you. So that's our strategy practice. We have a corporate finance practice that works with business leaders who are trying to either raise money, who have had someone approach them offering to buy them, or is actually trying to get an investor. So again, that's an important moment in an entrepreneur's life or in a business leader's life, and we walk with them. 
The third area we work in is in corporate training. And this was born out of a need that we saw. People are saying, I need my team to operate at a higher level. How can I do that? And that's how our training practice was born. Then, of course, the final area I'll talk about is our agribusiness, where the anchor product is actually an aquaculture solution. So that's Lattice. We've been around for 17 years, roughly the same age as M-Pesa. I know we've not grown as big <laughs> as M-Pesa, and that's deliberate. We've always intended to stay, stay small so that we are intimate with each, each of our customers. So that's Lattice, 17 years old, solving business problems. So next year you'll be a teenager. We'll be almost <laughs> ending teenage. <laughs> Please invite us for that. You know, we need to celebrate the teenagehood. We, will. we, right? will. we will. Now, that is very interesting. So tell us, through all that, now we got into the agribusiness side. Tell us a little bit more about Food Tech Africa. Where, where, what role does that particular um, brand name uh, play in this, in this uh, scope of lattice? So this story, our journey in aquaculture, began with a simple conversation. One of my partners, we partner with a company called Le Rive, based in the Netherlands. So my partner was around, and as usual, we are always meeting people, having conversations. And we met a farmer who said that he is unable to make money in fish farming. And that was an intriguing thing, because then we started to ask the questions we normally ask. Why can't you make money? What about the government ESP program that just happened a few years ago? Didn't that help? Where do you get your feed from? Is it the quality of the fingerlings? Is it the number of ponds you have? Is it your production method? And the more questions we asked, the more excited we became because we saw that there's an opportunity here, an opportunity to import technology, learnings from the Netherlands, partner with local companies who are facing problems that have been solved elsewhere in the world with a view to raising the aquaculture industry. The more questions we asked, the more we realized that unless we take a systems approach to our intervention, it's not going to work. So for the first time, at least in the history of Lattice, we said we are going to solve an industry-wide problem by looking at an entire value chain. So what we realized after our interviews and our research is that you can't help the farmer without providing feed. The feed producer won't put up a factory unless you convince him that there are farmers waiting to buy the feed. And the farmers won't agree to farm unless they are sure that there's a place where they'll get quality fingerlings. So it was one of those situations where you have to solve all the problems at the same time. So we talked to entrepreneurs from the Netherlands. We linked them with entrepreneurs in Kenya along each part of the value chain. So now as a result of Food Tech Africa, we have a farm in Machakos. Keep in mind, there's no lake or river in Machakos that yeah, I know it's of. It's very hot and dry. <laughs> we have a fish farm in Machakos that is currently producing five tons of tilapia in a month. That means 60 tons of tilapia a year. Where do they get their feed from? They get it from Unga. Because of feed tech, Food Tech Africa, Unga was able to partner with one of the largest feed producers in Europe called Scretting. They put up a feed processing factory in industrial area that can produce 5,000 tons of feed in a month. Where do they get their fingerlings from? Kemfri in Sagana, which is a government institution, has worked together with, with Kamuthanga to come up with quality fingerlings, the genetic stock. So you see the whole value chain is beginning to come in place and we're very proud of the impact that we've had in the industry. Awesome. And I know you've, you've mentioned the farm in Kamuthanga, you've mentioned a number of things. For those of us who are joining us, worry not, we shall give you a tour of one of the farms as we continue along so that you can get to see, put her words and, and, your, and your imagination and actually see what they are doing out there. Damiano, can I assure you that yes. if you see us on the farm, we will not be wearing be high like heels. <laughs> We will be appropriately dressed in gumboots, ready oh, yes. to get into the water and to see the fish and all so that. So this is the office look. This is <laughs> this is this is the, the look for Kempinski as we <laughs> as, as we, we celebrate launch. our farmers. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I'd like to quickly jump over to 
Julie so that she can get into this. Um, you've mentioned Food Tech Africa and Food Tech Africa through Food Tech Africa and solving the solutions through the value chain. We are now here launching the Aquaculture Academy. Now, quickly, let us tell us know what is the goal of the Aquaculture Academy? And why Aquaculture Academy? I think she's mentioned something, but just, yeah. yes. All right, so as, uh, as Winnie has mentioned, you know, when she started uh, with the story of uh, the, the young man who gave us a bit of an insight on the aquaculture sector within, within Kenya, we felt, um, you know, there was several interventions along the way, right? Uh, but we felt, what exactly is lacking? So as a result of the successes that Food Tech Africa has had for the last eight years, you know, there's Kamuthanga, there is, you know, the setup of the Unga factory, there's a setup of the demonstration farms in Tanzania, in Rwanda, in um, Kiambu. As a result of that, we still felt there was something that was missing, and that was human skilled capital. And it was more about why is there failed production? There's all these fish farmers, but there's still failed production. We are still not able to compete with imported fish. Why do we have a lot of imported fish? Why can't we meet the demand locally, right? Why do we have so many farms that are unprofitable? And for us, it's more about sustainability. Um, and so that's why we felt there is need for us to um, enhance the human scale capital. And as a result of that, we felt, you know, there is the need for the creation of Aquaculture Academy. So the main goal of Aquaculture Academy is actually to build and train aquapreneurs who are going to um, come up with profitable and sustainable uh, fish farms, businesses basically, but are also going to empower other people to be able to, um, to, tr to, to produce effectively and um, you know make money at the end of the day great you want to add on to that yeah i want to add on to that i agree with everything that julie has said but i want you to think about the dairy industry if you want to be a dairy farmer you know exactly where to go and get training you know exactly where to go and get feed and as a dairy farmer you know what to ask your farm manager from nairobi and that's the gap we saw where do you go if you want to start a fish farm you can go to our demonstration farms, but who will you hire? And once you've hired that person, what do you ask them? How do you track performance? And that's what the Aquaculture Academy is answering. Brilliant. Now, as we continue with that, I'd just like to ask, now that we are building the human resource capacity through Aquaculture Academy, what, what, um, who are the people, are we, who are we targeting? Who do you want to actually come and, and be part of the Academy? or who have you already because it's already ongoing it's not yes. it's nothing it, we are not talking about a non-existent venture no definitely like, not who are you targeting who you know um yeah in in very specific details mm -hmm. of these are the kind of people that we want for our academy perfect so we have three categories of of, of uh, trainees that we are actually targeting the first group is farm workers and their staff and this is more people who already are um you know having existing commercial farms or are yearning to have commercial farms and their staff members because you can be a trained fa uh, farmer but if your staff members are not trained then you're not going to be successful the second group of people that we're targeting is uh, trainers and extension workers so we have a course that uh, targets trainer of trainers there's also extension officers of the county government because we believe uh, through empowering them, they will then um, uh, take that uh, knowledge down to the farmers. And then there is also uh, trainers of NGOs as well as, um, uh, so the third category is basically students. And when I say students, it's more about, so there's graduate students who have undertaken aquaculture within the universities or within the various training institutions, but they need the internship. So through this academy, we provide practical skills as, as a way of them uh, undertaking the internship program. And then we also have existing students within the universities and within the institutions who would need attachment, what we call attachment within Africa and I guess across East Africa. So those are basically the three groups um, in, in a broad shell that we are, we are targeting with the academy. Brilliant. You've mentioned um, internship and practicality. Mm -hmm. So how do you carry out the trainings? 
is it is it just come let's sit down in a classroom this is this is what happens or is it hands on or is it a mixture of both like how do you disseminate the information to the students it's a mixture of both but we are heavily focusing on the vocational practical training because that's what is missing and so what we have done right now is we have partnered with two firms. So there is Kamuthanga, which Winnie mentioned earlier on, um, a member of uh, the Food Tech Africa. And Kamuthanga is based in, in the eastern side of Kenya. And then we also have Juliet, uh, that's in the western side of Kenya. And so with these two facilities, there is classrooms, they have hatcheries, they have um, outgrow facilities, they have marketing facilities. And so when the, when the, when the trainees go to this particular uh, farms, the expectation is they're not just gonna stand back and, and you know they have the trainers who are telling them what to do, but they're going to take part in the training, right? So if you need to, to learn about water quality um, um, aspect of, of aquaculture, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna do that the actual practical element of it with the trainers. And so with these two farms, we expect to undertake um, training across the three major production systems. And that's pond farming, cage farming, and recirculation aquaculture system. Brilliant. Now, for a layman like me who may not understand all that, <laughs> please tell us um, just a brief uh, breakdown of what courses are offered and how long those courses will take, as even as we just bring this to a close? Good question, Demiano. Um, so at the end of the day, we have courses that vary in length because we are going to have basic courses for those who are getting into aquaculture like you, um, people who want to still, you know, just start the learning and understanding of the, of the aquaculture sector. And it's moving from the basic stage all the way to advanced stage where you'll have the trainer of trainers courses. So depending on the course that we are actually going to undertake, it's, it's, it ranges between one week to eight weeks. So it all depends on the course that, that, that uh, a particular trainee would want to undertake. And with regards to the, um, the courses that are actually going to be undertaken, we have breeding courses, we have operational management, we're gonna have, this is very critical because without the business acumen training, we can teach all the technical skills that we want as far as aquaculture is concerned. But these businesses are not going to be able to really understand what it means to be sustainable, to be commercially viable. So we're gonna talk about financial management practices. We're gonna uh, give them um, you know, control of working capital. What do they need? How do they manage their money? So that's under, under business acumen. And then fi finally, we have quality control because you can produce all the fish you, have, you want to produce in the world. But if you don't have quality control of your production, then it affects your marketability. Awesome. Final question. Intakes. When are the next intakes? Is it ongoing? Has it, you know, uh, just give us a brief of that. So we've actually undertaken quite a number of trainings. So in fact, as at, as at date, um, as, as far as Photic Africa is concerned, we've already trained approximately 1,200 um, people. So this, this the, the launch of the academy is more officiating the academy. So the, the, the academy is open. We are welcoming uh, st trainees to register, and uh, they can go ahead and register at www.foodtechafrica.com slash aquaculture academy. So definitely feel free to go in onto the websites, feel free to have uh, the calls made. Uh, there is a, there's a number on the website that you can call to get more information as to how to go about uh, registering for the courses. Awesome, thank you so much. Let's celebrate Winnie and Julie for that. All right, ladies, I will release you. You may have your seats. Let's celebrate them even as Thank they- Thank you, Damiano. So will you be joining the class? Will you be starting a farm? We shall, we shall talk after this. <laughs> we shall talk after this. Definitely, there's something I want us to do. So we'll definitely touch base immediately after this. Okay. Again, thank All you, right. Winnie and Julie. Let's celebrate okay. them even as they take their leave. Brilliant. Just to reiterate, for those of us who are interested, please check out www.foodtechafrica.com forward slash aquaculture academy and you'll be able to register for the for the next intake that is currently ongoing 
and also get to know more about what Latis Africa does, what Latis Consulting does, and what the Aquaculture Academy is all about. At this particular point, we are very honored to be graced by the presence of representatives of the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Now, the embassy has been very instrumental in ensuring that the success of Food Tech Africa and the launch of the Aquaculture Academy um, has happened. So they've been very fruitful. They've worked with, um, with Latis Africa in ensuring that this happens. The embassy and the Netherlands Enterprise Agency are the key sponsors for the best farmers competition. You remember I mentioned that there's a competition that has been run and we shall be getting to know who the winners are very, very soon in the next short while. And to just help us with this, we have the two representatives that are joining us today are Ambassador Martin Brouwer. Martin is the ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Kenya, Somalia, and Seychelles. And we also have the lovely Ingrid Coving, um, the agriculture counselor for Kenya and Tanzania. And in this regard, we have a video that has been prepared by the ambassador, which we shall get to hear and watch. Good afternoon. My name is Martin Brouwer. I am the ambassador for the King of the Netherlands in Kenya. First of all, I would like to offer my congratulations with the launching of the first Aquaculture Academy in East Africa. What a great accomplishment. And yet another example of the cooperation between Kenya and the Netherlands. A cooperation that exists already for a long time. And a couple of years ago, the Netherlands and Kenya decided that it should be a cooperation based on mutual interest and on an equal partnership. And the binding element in that cooperation is a partnership around the SDGs. And that is why we focus on sustainable growth. And that is why we focus on job creation. And that is why we focus on food security and nutritional value and trying to attack the poverty problems in the country. So that is why we are involved in Kenya. And the Netherlands has also been involved in the agricultural system sector in um, Kenya. And we believe that agriculture has the potential to meet the growing demand for protein in East Africa, while supporting food security and income generation. And as a country, the Netherlands has a great ex uh, expertise in the field of sustainable agriculture, especially in terms of education and results and research. Sorry. Now, what, what is driving the success in the Netherlands? Not only in the agriculture sector, but moreover also in the economy. That is the close cooperation between private companies, research institutes, and a government that is facilitating the process by creating a good regulatory framework. I will come back to those issues. As a supporter of the Food Tech Africa Consortium, the Dutch Embassy in Nairobi has been on a seven-year journey together to develop the Kenya agricultural value chain. A seven-year journey, because that is what a partnership is asking. You have to engage for a longer period of time. Quick fixes are not possible. So this effort has led to some impressive results, which are all linked to the sustainable development goals, which I already referred to. Some examples, some 4,500 days of training have been provided. Now that in itself may not say a lot, but it leads to a thousand persons that have been trained and that is directly contributing to SDG4, which is on quality education. There was a direct creation of some 550 jobs, which is contributing to SDG8, decent work and economic growth. And also some 21 partnerships are created, 
which is contributing to SDG 17, Partnerships for the Growth. In those partnerships, Dutch companies and research institutes have played a major role. More than 10 companies in the agricultural sector have been involved in this program. The Agricultural University of Wageningen is, as a research institute well known in the world, they are also involved. Those are examples of how we build partnerships for SDGs. And with the opening of the Agricultural Academy, we make another step forward in the development of the agriculture sector. Another step, you would ask? Yes, another step. Because we started with the establishment of the Aquafeed facility in Kenya. And that was the first building block. And now we enter into the second building block. Key to education is ensuring that knowledge that has been gained will provide opportunities for life. So working in the sector brings a lot of experience. And that experience is another building block for developing further in that sector. And in that sector, especially opportunities for young people exist. That is also related to the SDGs. Kenya is a young country, not young in terms of the number of years of existence, but in terms of its population. And if we can focus on the youth, that will greatly help to provide for a future that holds a promise of development. By working together with local knowledge institutes, capacity building is supported and long-lasting impact is achieved. That is what this academy needs to do. And after all, isn't it true that to invest in youth is to invest in the future of agriculture? That is what we try to do here. So we believe that the great potential of agriculture in East Africa can only be unlocked by working together using the strength of both Dutch and all East African partners. Now you hear me talking about East Africa and not only about Kenya, which is important because we need scale. So when the journey of Food Tech Africa started, it quickly became apparent that only a regional approach can create the critical mass needed to bring about structural change in the regionally interdependent value chain of agriculture. So we need to work together. But following the results of the project in Kenya, Food Tech Africa introduced its farming activities to the wider East African region, being actively involved in aquaculture activities in Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda and Uganda. And there you see our way of trying to build that scale that would allow really for the sector to establish itself well. And by using the strengths of the different individual countries, the full potential of agriculture in East Africa can be unlocked. From environmental regulations to regional trade of agricultural products. And here you see suddenly coming in the role of government, because providing the regulatory framework is essential for the chain to be, develop itself. And that's what we call in the Netherlands the Golden Triangle. We need private sector, we need research institutes, and we need the government to work closely together. And not only in Kenya, but in the region. So it is a formidable effort that's being undertaken here. Aquaculture development goes hand in hand with that regional cooperation. Let's make it work. So once again, my congratulations on the launching of the Agriculture Academy. I will be looking forward to visit the campus in the future and learn about the combination of training and the practical experience on a real-life agricultural farm. I really hope to do that soon. Thank you so much for your attention. All right. Thank you so much. That was the ambassador from the ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. So Martin Brouwer, we celebrate that he was able to just 
document a special message for us even as we celebrate today's launch. As we continue, for those of us who are joining us online, kindly, I will have a Q&A session in the next short while. What we're asking of you is that on the app, when you look through the app, there is a section that is written Q&A. Kindly post all your questions there. On the Q&A section, that's where you post all your questions. Uh, kindly, for those of us, I know some have been asking the questions on the chat section. We are not able to retrieve them. So kindly just move them to the Q&A section for us to be able to see them. And we shall be answering them very, very soon. Now, one of the issues that was mentioned here by Winnie was that the, the issue is to solve value chain problems, all right? And one of the issues that she mentioned was about people looking for investors and all these things. So we have someone who's going to speak specifically on how to be investor ready so that we can start preparing ourselves on what, what the investor needs, the mind of the investor. And to do this for us is none other than Joel Mugiswa, Mugwisa, my apologies, Joel Mugiswa, Mugwisa, my apologies again, is the investment manager at Aquaspark. Not only is he the invest investment manager, he also holds a master's in investment management from the Henley Business School. He has an Omega certificate in credit skills assessment from the Chartered Bankers Institute in London. He has a certificate in private equity and venture capital from the London Business School. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Joel Mugwisa as he speaks on how to be investor ready. Karibu Joel. Um, thank you very much. Um, can you, I hope um, everyone can see and hear me. Yeah, so as I'm introduced, uh, my name is Joel Mugwisa um, Semukaya. I am the investment manager at um, Aquaspark, uh, based in the Netherlands. Um, I am here today to give a few um, tips on um, investor readiness for small and business um, aquaculture, for small and medium aquaculture businesses in, um, in Africa. Yeah, so um, I would like to start off by, um, by um, walking through um, um, the content of the presentation. So I'll be talking about um, ownership, um, the vision and mission of um, the business, um, the business plan, um, you know how to prepare yourself to pitch to investors. And then lastly, I'll do an intro on um, Aquaspark. So to start off with ownership, um, when you go out to meet um, investors, you need to have in place, you know, the ownership structure of the business. So it needs to be clear, you know, who's the owner of the business. Um, investors, of course, would not want, you know, to, um, to listen to pitches, you know, from people who have uh, briefcase businesses. So um, related to that, um, when you're running a business, you need to make sure that at least one of the owner is dedicated full time to the business. So investors won't be, you know, um, wanting to listen to uh, people pitching, you know, to raise money from them when, um, you know, you're, you're doing your full time job, for example, at Pricewaterhouse and then running your business uh, on the side. So either the majority owner or one of the team, you know, should be dedicated full time to the business. And then also a business should have its own values and missions. And um, I'll talk about this later in the next slide. So the owners should be aligned to the values and the vision and the mission of the, of the company. And then lastly, as um, the owners of the business, you need to be open to collaboration with partners, investors, and any other like-minded people in the sector that you're working in, for this case, um, aquaculture. So what is the mission and vision of, um, of a business? So the mission statement basically defines the company's objectives and um, its approach to reach um, those objectives. So the company should have objectives. And then secondly, the vision statement should describe the desired future position of the company. And then usually the elements of the mission and vision statements are often combined to provide um, a statement of the company's purposes, goals, and the values. And then uh, relating back to the vision, so the company should have a strategy of how you know, to plan to achieve um, the mission you know, in X number of years. So for example, you, know, you would say you want to achieve ABCD, it may be one, two, or three years. 
Right. Now um, I move on to the business plan, which is um, a very important factor when one goes out you know, to, um, to raise capital from um, investors. And uh, I'm going to run you through uh, different sections of what um, a good and you know, detailed business plan should have. So um, for starters, there should be an executive summary in the business plan, basically you know, summarizing what the business concept is. And then um, we should also have um, a business overview, you know, um, <clears throat> aligning, you know, what the, um, what the operations, marketing and, you know, products of the services are. And then um, next to that, you should have a detailed operations plan. So in this case of aquaculture, you need, you know, to, to know how your operations is all the way from the hatchery to your marketing. And then um, you should also do a very detailed market analysis. You should know, you know, who your customers are. You should know, you know, which market you're working in, things like, you know, um, average sales prices um, in the market. And then obviously you should know, you know, what your products and services are. So aquaculture is a very, you know, big industry. So you might have products, you know, like fresh fish. You might have products like um, Aquatech, which is um, technology. You might have products like um, uh, feed for the fish. And then um, you should also, in your business plan, um, talk about um, sales and marketing. How are you going to get your products and services to the market? What approach are you, you know, going to use um, to meet you know, your, your customers? And then also related to that, you need to do a competitor analysis. So basically, you need to know who your competitors are um, out there in the, in the market. And then you know, try to see how you can uh, position yourself to beat this um, competition. And then um, you also need to talk about your management team. Um, so in aquaculture, I mean, um, investors would very much be interested in knowing who the owners are, who the CEO is, whether you've got um, aquaculture expertise on the team. So you need to highlight all that. And then uh, moving on to the financial part, you need to state in your business plan the historical numbers. So if your business has been running for a while, you need you know, to state out you know, what, um, what numbers you've been achieving in terms of you know, profits or losses, you know, what your balance sheet is looking like. And then um, with the vision going forward, you need to know and you need to make out you know, what your projections are. So where do you see your company maybe three, five, seven to 10 years? You need to see you know, what kind of revenue that you're looking to make uh, in that timeline. And then um, you also need to talk about your financing plan because here you, you need to know um, what kind of financing you're looking for and in what amount. So are you raising, for example, 10,000 you know, US dollars, 20,000 US dollars? And also, you know, in what way do you want to use um, those funds? And then lastly, in the business plan, you need to talk about the risks and uh, mitigations. What risks do you see that your business will face? And if they are there, then how do you plan to mitigate um, these risks? Right, then uh, let's move on to the pitching part, which is the most important one. So pitching means, um, you know, um, going to sell your business to the investors. So what do you need to know and what do you need to do? So here are uh, a few tips. First of all, you need to know the stage of your business. So um, is your business still a concept? Do you, I mean, by this I mean, do you have it written on a piece of paper? Uh, also, you know, we can call that Greenfield or have you already you know, uh, put your concept into practice whereby you are a startup? And then lastly, um, the other stage of the business would be the growth stage. So the growth stage is usually uh, that stage of the business where you've moved from the startup, you've proven your model and you want to um, scale up. Um, in this case, I would believe that most businesses would be in the section of concepts or um, startups. So as an entrepreneur, you need to know the type of funding that you're seeking out. So um, funding can be in different forms. It can be straight debt, you know, like, you know, you just walk into a bank and then apply for a loan, or maybe uh, apply for a loan from a, <clears throat> from a private equity or venture capital investor. Um, funding can also be in the form of um, equity, which means basically um, an investor buying shares into your business. Um, just also to go back to, to debt, funding can also be in form of what we call um, convertible debt. So um, an investor can provide debt into a business, but then after a given timeline, convert that debt into um, equity. And then funding can also be in form of a mezzanine funding, which is basically um, um, a mixture of uh, debt and equity. And also in very many ways, especially for uh, startups, funding can come in form of um, grants. 
So as an entrepreneur, you need to know what particular funding you're looking out for. And this should be, you know, be able to meet the needs of uh, the financing needs of your business. And then another important thing for an entrepreneur to know out there is um, what kind of investor that you need to bring on board. So there are various forms. There are angel investors. Um, so angel investors, this could be, I mean, uh, friends, family, workmates, um, you know, that, um, that bring money into the business at its very early stage. So for example, at the stage of, um, of, um, of the concept, and then um, investors could come in the type of uh, foundations and family offices. Uh, these two categories also usually come in um, at the stage of concept or startup. And then we've also got venture capital and private equity investors. So venture capital investors usually want to invest in um, startups because uh, that's uh, more risky. And then the private equity investors usually want to um, invest at the growth stage, you know, um, businesses that have already proven their, <clears throat> their model. And then relating to that, as an entrepreneur, you need to do a lot of networking and research. So you need you know, to, to do lots of hours on the internet, you need to talk to friends, you need to talk to families to find out you know, who the investors out there are, because if you don't network and research, I mean, the investors and, and, you know, and, um, and the likes won't come you know, to find you where you are. Um, so let me also talk about the investor tracker. So when you're looking for, um, for investors out there, you need to have a tracker, usually probably in, um, in an Excel you know, um, sheet. You need to know which investor you're talking to. You need to make a progress you know, um, every now and then so that you don't lose track of the conversations that you're having with, uh, with the different um, investors. It can be time consuming, it can be confusing. Yeah, so you, you, you really need you know, to track your, your conversations with them. And then um, also importantly is for you to have um, what we call a data room. So the data room is basically, you know, um, um, a, soft, um, a soft copy where you can keep all your data. So this can do with um, the business organization papers, you can do, you know, with paperwork dealing with um, the finances and also any other related, you know, um, stuff that you need to, um, to share up there with, um, with the investors. So you, you need to show them that you're organized, that you've got you know, all your data in one place and, you know, and be able to share this uh, with them. And then um, second, <clears throat> second lastly is uh, the pitch deck. So the pitch deck um, is a document that you, know, um, you make up yourself as an entrepreneur to be able you know, to pitch your business, to sell your business out there to, um, to the potential investors. So there are lots of templates on the internet of, um, of pitch decks. But um, the trick here is to really bring out the business concept, be able to explain it to the investors as the entrepreneur, you need to know your business. So it won't make sense for you to go out to meet investors when you cannot explain you know, what your business concept is, what your vision is, what your mission is, and why you want to be you know, in, a, in a few years time. And then lastly, you need to persevere because I mean, um, I'm looking for um, money out there is a really difficult task. So you need to keep on you know, talking to as many investors as you can. So lastly, I want to make a brief introduction like in two or three minutes about Aquaspark. So Aquaspark is a global fund that invests in um, aquaculture. Our mission is to move the aquaculture industry towards healthy, sustainable and affordable production with uh, financial returns. And uh, the mission is to scale the proven model that we're already working with. So to date, for example, we've made 37 investments in 21 portfolio companies. These include our follow-on investments. Um, we've got an experienced team of uh, 20 members, nine of whom are on the investment team. And then recently, um, we brought up the idea of the Aquaculture Africa Fund for um, Aquaspark. So this will be a sub fund of the main fund investing uh, particularly in uh, aquaculture on the African continent. So um, we, we basically want to build a thriving and sustainable aquaculture <coughs> scenario in Sub-Saharan Africa, which would be to create jobs, um, contribute to food security, and relieve pressure on our natural resources. And then uh, we want to also tie in the Africa Fund into the Global Main Fund in terms of uh, synergies. And then um, the investment criteria for the Africa Fund, you know, we'll be making investments all the way from Greenfield to Gold Stage. Uh, we shall be looking for equity stakes between 20 to 49 percent. 
and then um, all our investments and divestments are uh, approved by an independent um, investment committee and the fund will be uh, 50 million US dollars initially and we hope to close it out um, in the summer of this year. Um, so far we've invested in two African businesses, one of which is Chikoa Fish Farm in Mozambique, which is um, a farming operation <coughs> yeah, on, the, on the continent. So thank you very much. And you can visit us on www.aquaspark.nl. All right, thank you, Joel, for that. As, as you've heard him speak, I don't know if you've felt the passion that he's speaking with, right? He is very passionate about impact investing. So I think that has really come out even as he was talking to us about how to be investor ready. Now, moving on quickly, I'd like to welcome John Eric. John Eric is a project manager at Aquaspark. And on top of that, he has a Bachelor of Science degree in fisheries and ag aquaculture management from the University of Nairobi. He is now the current uh, a project manager at Lattice Aquaculture Limited. He, he's also, hey, this guy has a very good portfolio. He's also undergone a professional expert course on aquaculture farming systems. And uh, he's currently pursuing his master's in limnology. Please let us welcome John Mark to the stage with a round of, uh, John Eric to the stage with a round of applause. I think the first thing he let us know is what, what limnology is all about. All right? We can just move closer there. So first of all, let us know what, what, what is limnology? <laughs> <laughs> and am I pronouncing it correctly? <laughs> no, that's the correct definition. Uh -huh. So no, what correct pronunciation. pronunciation. Yeah. So what is it? This is the scientific study of fresh waters. No, but can't you just say scientific study <laughs> of fresh waters? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, the floor is yours, Karibu Sana. Thanks a lot. So I'm generic, as you said. I'm a project manager at Lattice Aqua. So at this very moment, I'm going to introduce the two aquaculture academy campuses. And we've so much stressed on the practical nature of the trainings that we are going to undertake and the ones we've undertaken before. And it is in this line that we decided to go with existing farms, farms that have been around for quite some time now and have already proved business cases out of the ventures they do. So we have two farms. We tried to be as representative as possible, that is in terms of geographical location and in terms of farming system used. So in that case, we have a farm in Eastern Kenya, that is Kamudanga, a recirculatory aquaculture systems farm with a very good hatchery and grow out system. There's fish processing on the farm. And so at this very moment, I'm going to ask that you show a video of Kamudanga, then later I'll introduce the second campus. Thank you. My name is Anthony Ndeto, and I'm a director of Kamudanga Farm. Kamudanga Farm is an aquaculture farm that has been uh, put together by Kamudanga and Food Tech Africa. Food Tech Africa came in with the knowledge and uh, technology, and, and Food Tech Africa have been able to transfer this to Kamudanga Farm in a very successful way. You know, they basically took us through the whole route of uh, how to, to, to fish farm, uh, you know, in a very intensive way. And uh, this also led to the introduction of, of the recirculatory system, which is basically st still new to this part of our world. And, and Futek Africa was also able to impart knowledge and the technology to Kamadanga Farm, you know, to, not to use res the recirculatory system to fish farm. The recirculatory system is basically where you recirculate your water 24 hours in a day. It helps you conserve water and it helps in the production of fish in a very limited area where you can produce fish very, very, uh, you know, intensively. An aquaculture academy will be introduced uh, here on Kamadanga Farm. And the aquaculture academy will train trainees on uh, fish production. This is uh, from egg to plate. And this will also put them in touch with learning how to run the recirculatory system and uh, teaching them what the re re recirculatory system is. 
it's a very intensive way to farm. So, you, so, so one will need to know exactly how to run the recirculatory system. So all trainees will have the benefit of learning the whole process and actually working with the employees of Kamodanga Farm on the farm on a day-to-day -day basis of, of, you know, handling it, you know, on a practical basis. Thanks a lot. So just a little about Kamudanga is that if you had to talk about milestones of Food Tech Africa, then we'd consider Kamudanga as one of the first projects that Food Tech Africa has undertaken. It's a farm where you can basically follow fish from the egg to the plate, as Tony has said. They have very nice experience with trainings. It's actually where I was trained myself, so you can already see the result. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to introduce the second farm called Juliet. Now, if you talk about aquaculture in Kenya and even the entire East Africa, I would say that this was one of the first farms that took up commercial aquaculture in a very serious note. So they are doing ponds and currently have gone into cages. They also have an archery. So you see the representation. We have Ras in Kamudanga, a hatchery, where they're doing YY technology. While in Juliet, we have ponds. There's a hatchery and cages, and in the hatchery, they are doing sex reversal using hormones. So there's very nice representation. So at this very moment, you're going to see Eno Swere in a video just taking us through his farm in Juliet. I'm uh, Eno Swere, uh, the founder and uh, a managing director of the Juliet Enterprises. At uh, Juliet, we have uh, uh, five farms, four land-based farm, and this one which is water-based, uh, where we have the cages. Uh, we started fish farming in 2010 uh, with uh, four ponds in one and a half uh, acre farm. And in the cage farm, now we have 25 big cages with a capacity of 17 tons, where we do selective breeding. Aquaculture, one, has been well-paying. Uh, we've seen quite a bit of growth from 2010 to where we are today, uh, 11 years down the line. The, to me, the biggest challenge of aqu uh, in aquaculture in Africa is training. We don't have hands on training, people who can manage fish farms. In sub-Saharan Africa, it's still in its infant uh, stages. And that means what many people are used to is the subsistence fish farming. So people don't have the experience, and therefore we've been ill-equipped to have people who can manage uh, commercial fish farms. My first time at uh, Food Tech Africa, uh, John Eric uh, giving me a call, uh, and they learned that Juliet is one of uh, the commercial uh, fish farming enterprise. Then they told me about their intention uh, to have a training for, for commercial fish farmers. I always believed in uh, vocational training, you know, where people are hands-on, uh, because that would capture all cadre of farmers or all cadre of extension officers, irrespective of their level of education. So when they explained to me they wanted that practical training, I bought into it. I would advise uh, people to come and experience the unique training. You know, you can hardly go wrong when you learn to grow one ton of fish with people who grow a hundred tons of fish. We also have a hatchery, uh, which is um, a state-of-art hatchery, where we are doing incubation of eggs, hatching them, uh, sex reversing them, that will also be physical. Uh, in all those points, uh, one, we have a resource center uh, next to our hatchery. Uh, in the um, live fish uh, center, we are also putting in uh, uh, some structures and tents where we can get, uh, our people can be trained. Thank you. So Enos and the co-director at Juliet have been very instrumental in the development of the aquaculture sector. That is entire East Africa. They've trained so many people. It's been a hub of knowledge. 
So that's why we decided to work with them. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to do what has worked, and that's why we're using Juliet. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, John Eric, for that. Let's celebrate him with a round of applause, even as he takes his leave. Just a kind reminder uh, for those of us who are joining us online, please post your questions on the Q and A section. We have a section right there on the right hand of your screen. You'll be able to see that panel. It is right next to the chat section. So please put them there so that we can be able to retrieve them and answer them adequately during the Q&A session. At this point, I'd like us to, I'd like to introduce a short coffee break for about 10 minutes, and then we shall come back and be able to finish off the rest of our program. Remember, we have our awardees who are waiting to find out who is going to go home with a big prize today. So we'll be getting to know who has won in the next quarter. As you continue, remember to use the hashtag Aquaculture Academy as you post, as you interact, and of course, as I said again, if you have any questions, there's a Q&A section. For now, we shall take a small break and we shall be back in 10 minutes. Thank you so much.